Welcome back to the channel, to Nobby on Cars, and this is the first time I've had to do a video where I've had sun cream on because it's absolutely lovely. A lovely summer's July morning here in Ireland. This is the Opel Grandland X. It's a competitor with the Nissan Qashqai, the Hyundai Tucson, the Volkswagen Tiguan. All those cars, you know the space, the space that everyone wants at the moment. A crossover. Now this version is the ultimate one, which is celebrating 120 years of Opel. 120 years ago, it wasn't yesterday or the day before, the Treaty of Paris was signed, ending the Spanish-American War. Also 120 years ago, spare thought for Henry Linfield of Brighton, He's the first person to have a fatal accident on a public highway recorded in history. Uh, apparently his car went down a hill and went out of control. R.I.P. Henry. Thankfully, automobiles have moved along hugely in those 120 years. And there's so many safety features in this car, I'm going to tell you about them. But starting at the front, have a look at this. So you've got a 360 camera and the front bit is here on the badge and that makes you being able to see things. Come around here, there's blind spot. So you get blind spot in your wing mirrors. That'll uh, prevent you from hitting motorcyclists and banging into other cars. And then around the back, there's an automatic release for a tailgate. You just pop this and up it goes. It's actually one of the quicker ones in terms of electric uh, tailgates as they go. And also, what you can do with this one is, you can use the kick function. Now I'm told it is a kick function. It's not a sweeping function. Let's just try it. Because I'm doing it on camera, it probably won't work and I look like an absolute clown doing some sort of a... It does work, it's worked in the past, it just... Uh, no. Also you get the uh, black privacy glass in the back, black roof and black wing mirrors if you go for this Ultimate Edition. Ultimate Editions also come with uh, keyless, so you just rub the door and it opens like a genie in his lava lamp. Uh, so that's enough of the outside. 19 inch alloy wheels also come on this model, they look pretty good. They've got like diamond cut and black going on, and that is very, very nice. So let's jump around the back, have a look at the boot in the practicality section of it, see how big it is, what gadgets are in the back of it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet, please, and pop that notification button, the little, little bell lad, just pop him on, and the next time there's a new video, You'll know about it first. Oh yeah, nearly forgot. Premium adaptive forward lighting LEDs. They move at nighttime around corners. They're very, very bright. Very, very impressive. Optional extra, standard on the Ultimate Edition. Just gonna give the boot release. I've seen this work. I know it works. But anyway, it's electric. And up it goes. But one of the quicker boot releases in terms of when it reaches peak height. Uh, two exhausts down here, they are fake. So nothing to see here. Let's have a look at the boot. 514 litres as standard, nearly 1,700 litres if you fold those rear seats back. You get a 12 volt charger, you get uh, halogen lights in the back, not LED. Two little handles here where you can pop those rear seats forward. There is a area under here, as I drop everything. Um, there is your Denon, sound system part of that sub in the back is the ultimate has a denon upgraded sound system uh, there is foam and compressors bring back the spare wheels you won't find one in the back of this car and there's a couple of storagey bits here around the side and you can pop things into them parcel shelf and your boot release oh Come on, come on. The folding aspect of the seat, which gets you nearly 1,700 uh, liters in terms of boot space, is very generous. You do pop out this parcel shelf. Will it go under here? That is the question. Yes, it does. Excellent, right, pull these. Will they go down without me interfering? Yes, they do. Excellent, well done, Opel. No faffing around in the front and trying to fold them back. They do get caught in the seat belts when you're pushing them back up. I'll allow that though. And then so easy to get them back up. Again, pull that aforementioned seat belt, click them into place. How long does this take? Can I do it in less than 10 seconds? Oh, the armrest is folded down. Oh. The idea is your hands are full and you shouldn't have to 
basically touch anything to get the boot open. It's a good workout, but it's, it's just not happening today. One thing not too much a fan of is the angle, the way this door opens, it's kind of coming at you this way, it's not 90 degrees and it makes getting things and humans and baby stuff in there a bit easier. But back of the car overall is very pleasant. Legroom is excellent, pretty much a flat floor in the center, which is very, very good for middle passengers because their legs get a bit squished. Uh, the Ultimate Edition does get rear heated seats. You won't get that in lesser spec models, but you do get one USB charge in the back. And something the Qashqai doesn't have is vents at the back for your passengers so that's nice there's a uh, storage at the back of the seats and it's covered so it doesn't look messy if you get the optional panoramic glass sunroof light floods in there's a couple of lights here again they're halogen on the inside there is a center armrest folds down which is good two uh, cup holders they're not massive cup holders you do get folding access point into the rear of the car and that is all right as well. And it is comfortable and fine. And legroom is really good. Height, very, very good. Glass, sunroof, not impacting. Roof height for passengers. And there's even little small windows back there for extra light. So that is all fine. Now the Isofix seats, they get a bit narrower as you actually get towards the bar where you need to be. So Clipping in an Isofix seat is a little bit trickier just because you're, you're kind of having to shove it in a bit more to get it to clip. It's easier in a Qashqai. It's not something you're doing every day anyway. Once generally you get the seat in, you're not touching it. So it's just a little bit, it requires more force to get it to go in the middle. But once they're in, it's fine. And like I say, it's nice and spacious. I think legroom and that kind of general area in the back is more along the lines of the Hyundai Tucson than the Qashqai for space. That's a good thing, by the way, in case you're wondering. Right, let's have a look up front, see what it's like for drivers and passengers in the Grandland X. Hope you've hit subscribe to the channel by now. Thank you very much. Come on, just this once. Come on, little fella. Come on. So, so far, I can't really split it between this, the Tucson or the Qashqai. They're all fairly similar. But what's it like in the middle and up front? Is it more luxurious? Let's find out now. Hmm, that's an issue. A bit of squeaking out of the plastic there. It's only this actual car, so, you know, I'm sure the rest of them are fine. Uh, steering wheel is large, very large. Ultimate edition, heated. You get radar guided cruise control. These are things that are going to be not always standard on the range, uh, but you do get Android and CarPlay and Bluetooth USB and normal Bluetooth streaming on all models of the Grandland X. So that is not an issue. Sliding armrest under here is where your wireless charging is. If you get wireless charging, that is a strange place to do it. It has a little elastic band that you can like it's made of fabric and stuff but anyway you can uh, hold the phone in place there and then is this removable oh yes it is is that meant to be it's meant to be like that if i've broken it but anyway it's a, it's an area where you can store things keys and whatnot electric handbag right uh this is the automatic gearbox should you go automatic there's nothing on top like just even a little open logo or something would be nice uh, loads of storage down here, another 12 volt charger here and a USB and you can keep things, lots of things in there. The plastics used do tend to be a bit more nice and soft than the Hyundai and the Nissan. So it feels a little bit more German in that way. The glove box though is useless. So you can fit the instruction manual, right? And there's a little tunnel in there where that goes, but this is a big black thing here. What is that about? Door pockets, not carpeted. While all models of the Grand On X do get a touchscreen, some are four inches, this is the upgraded five, and it will let you do everything at the touch of a button, and that's fine. One thing I love about it is the volume control, which is also the power button. A lot of cars, when you twist that, the little symbol moves around and that wrecks my head. Does that annoy anybody else or am I just a weirdo? It stays straight up in the Opal. It's 
beautiful. You can also unlock and lock your doors from that center point, which sometimes in a hurry, you're like, oh, where is it? Heated windscreen for cold, frosty mornings. Sounds like the start of an Oasis song. And you get air-cooled seats in the Ultimate Edition as well as heated seats. The air-cooled, they're okay. Sometimes, though, if you've never used them before, it kind of just feels like you've wet your pants. Not that I've done that recently or anything, but... Oh, leg extenders. I do like leg extenders there in the front of the Ultimate Edition front driver and passenger seats as well. They do make journeys a little bit more comfortable. There is no doubt about that. These seats though, AGR is what they're known as, which is uh, a thing in Germany that they used to classify how good seats are for your back and these are AGR. Even on this two liter automatic six speed, 177 brake horsepower engine, the road tax is 270 euro. So very economical to tax and run as well. It's doing just over seven litres per 100 kilometres around Dublin city centre with a bit of motorway driving as well. So Grandland X, what's it like so far? I've been impressed. I would really find it hard to split hairs between this and the Tucson and the Qashqai. I've never been in a Qashqai spec as well as this car. I have been in the Tucson, however, I think I prefer this. Typical crossover seating position in the Grandland X, good visibility all round, obviously aided by the fact that you have blind spot and other safety gadgets such as frontal collision avoidance. Uh, this Grandland X will even let you know when you're just a bit too close to the car in front, you'll get a warning in the display. I'm doing 7.2 litres per 100 kilometres. This is the more powerful version of the two litre diesel. There's many options you can get, including a 1.2 petrol, which is more than adequate adequate should you be using your Grandland X in city environments, dropping kids to school, in and out of work, that kind of setup, it will be fine. If you're doing more rural driving, more long distance driving where overtaking is something that you need to, I suppose, do quite a bit, this version with 177 brake horsepower will give you plenty of straight line performance. You will need to back off a bit as you're coming around bends because crossovers, they weren't really meant for going around bends at high speed. One of the things the Grandland X does have over some of its rivals, however, is an eight speed automatic gearbox. That means you're gonna be ticking over at lower RPM if you're doing motorway driving, and in general, the car will be more fuel efficient because of that eight speed gearbox. Something to think about. There's two automatic gearboxes, a six-speed and an eight-speed as featured in this model and also a manual with six-speed. And Opel provide five levels of trim, starting with SC, 120-year edition, SRI, Elite and Ultimate. We'll get a harsher ride quality on these 19-inch alloy wheels. It's not particularly unpleasant, however. It's just something to bear in mind. And the car just feels a little bit planted on the road, a bit more planted than you might expect because of the width of those tyres. But does it feel in any way more sturdy between this and some of the crossover competition from the brands we've mentioned earlier on in the video? It's probably a hard one to call. I don't know if it's just the German feel. It just feels a bit more sturdy or something. But I think by and large, you could close your eyes and you wouldn't really know which type of crossover you're behind the wheel of. It all performs as it should, very predictable, and something that will be perfect for getting your family around. So the choice really is yours. The Qashqai has always been a little bit cheaper than the Tucson, and, and in this case, the Grandland X. However, if you want something that isn't as common on Irish roads, because let's face it, Although the Nissan Qashqai is the best selling SUV of all time, that can only mean one thing, there's lots of them around. So maybe if you want to be a little bit different and have something a little bit more unique, then the Grand Land X isn't a bad shout at all. I put this car in the same bracket as the Kia Sportage and the Hyundai Tucson. If you've got larger, more grown up rear passengers, maybe the kids are heading towards the particularly pleasant teenage years well then, it might be worth looking at this for extended leg room in the back. And no doubt, that very, very big boot when you throw down those rear seats. 
There's a lot of these cars on sale in Ireland today, so I've made it a bit easier for you. If you click up on the top left there, there's a playlist of all the crossover and SUV models that I've reviewed. Have a look there and see which one takes your preference. Handy, isn't it? So thank you very much for watching this review of the Opel Grandland X. Hopefully you've found out some things about it. If you want to leave a question, the comments section is there for that. Uh, like the video if you've enjoyed watching it and subscribe to the channel as always if you want to help us grow. For more information you can get it on opel.ie and I'll talk to you very, very soon.